Welcome to the video from Long Range Shooters of Utah. If you're watching this video, then you probably love to do a lot of this. The problem is, is if you do a lot of those things, there's one thing that's going to get old, it's going to wear out, and it's going to have to be either replaced, or it's going to have to be annealed. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, what I got in the mail was my first annealer. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. I've been bumming off my friends, Curtis, Austin, all those guys, bumming off their annealer. Now I've got my own. The one that I chose to go with was the Annealies Annealer. And I'm going to tell you a little bit why later, but first of all, let's open this box and see what came with it. All right, so let's dive in and see what we got here. So this came, I uh, ordered it on Tuesday. It's now Friday. came today, so shipping was quick. Um, this came from Jeff Buck at Anneli's. Uh, he's located in uh, Deltona, Florida. I had the pleasure of speaking with Jeff on the phone briefly. Seems like a really cool guy. Um, he makes these at home. Um, he's got a handful of employees and really puts a lot of love into every machine, it sounds like, and really just does it because he loves shooting and uh, wanted to make a really quality product at a good price. Uh, so I like this pitch. I like what this thing has to offer, and that's why I ordered it. So let's get it open. That's right. All right, so here's our machine. Got some paperwork. It says here, thank you for your purchase, and I hope you enjoy the Neely's machine. To make the machine fit in the box, we've had to aim the torch toward the top of the machine. You'll need a half-inch rest to readjust the torch to where you want it. The half-inch bolt is at the center of the back of the box. If you're not sure where you want the torch to aim, please look at www.neely's.com. There you'll find a link to a YouTube video and you'll see proper alignment of where the torch needs to point. Make sure when you aim the torch that the torch is pointing outward to the edge of the wheel and toward the neck of the case. The black torch adjustment knob should almost be facing you. In this video, the black torch adjustment knob is facing up, but this has been changed for ease of use. Be sure not to aim the torch, the, the torch flame so that it touches the wheel. You'll also want to find some valuable information about annealing on our website. Additionally, you can find how to adjust the speed control and flame on our YouTube video. Optionally, we make two kits. There's a $25 charge for each of those. One kit contains of a thinner indexing wheel for shorter cases, cases such as a 300 blackout. The other kit consists of thicker indexing wheels with larger slots for larger and bigger cases, such as a 338 and 4570, and a torch extension bolt with spacer. Thank you, Jeff Buck. So let's dive in here. So it looks like we've got a couple of kits. So he did send me um, a couple of kits. Uh, one, the large caliber kit for my 7300 and then also a 300 blackout kit and then also a little special treat that he actually doesn't sell but he wanted us to take a look at it and test it and that is his extra large caliber kit for 50 cals, 375 shy tack, 408 shy tack and so forth. So we've got that there. I'll just show these real quick here on the camera. So these are the nylon wheels. That's the large 50 cal kit. And of course you've got, that's the 300 blackout kit. You can see that it's a lot thinner by comparison. That's the larger, large caliber kit. So you can see how much thicker they are. We'll take them out of the package later and show you, but you get an idea. So those accommodate the different sizes. Very well packaged. I mean, they fit this thing in there just barely. Let's go ahead and get it out of here. American flag on the front of it. So just looking at the back side here, we've got some more packaging, a zip tie. So looking at the back, it looks as if we need to cut a zip tie to get this out of there. So there's our hose to connect to our propane tank. And then we've got the tray that catches the uh, catches the brass after it's dropped from the annealer. Just happen to have some snips here, so carefully snip that. So there we've got our tray, nicely made. We got some business cards in there for annealies. There's our tray. And 
And then you've got your power cord, two parts. Looks like a computer power cord. Look at the rear of the machine here. So the idea behind this design, he said, is that the uh, you can use it on either a large propane bottle or you can do a small one. If you use a small one, it actually will fit right inside the box here. As you can see it's not huge. It's got some electronics back there and then your motor. And then the front of the machine. Nice stickers, nice blue switch. And he's got the standard wheels installed. The standard wheels that come on it um, will accommodate any of your kind of mid-sized calibers, like your 308s, your 65 by 47s 260 Remingtons, the ones that we most uh, commonly use in, in our sport. So there is our Anneal Ease annealer. So on the front of it here, obviously got our torch that's facing up. So very simple design, really. Uh, you just loosen that little screw there and you can adjust the direction of the torch and the flame. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory how this thing works. Uh, we'll obviously show it later, but as you can see here, you've got your torch, you've got your brass that'll sit down here as it rotates, cooks the end of the brass, and then drops it down into the tray. So like a Gerode, you can pile in a bunch of brass up here and it will automatically feed it with this wheel as it turns. It drops it here. This wheel will make the case rotate so you're getting a nice even uh, heating of the neck. And then once it gets around to the proper time, it will grab it and then drop it down into the case. So let's get her set up. So we've got the annealies out of the box now. I want to go ahead and plug it in. Uh, so once again, it comes with kind of a computer style charger. If you look over on the right hand side of the machine. You can see it's got a little port here for your cord, power cord. Slide that in there. Of course plug the other end into your socket and you should be ready to rock. So it's got a couple of different uh, buttons here. So one is the power button itself. It's got a nice blue light on it just like their logo there. And then as you turn this knob that will increase the speed I'll grab a couple brass here, drop it in, and see, show you how it works. So I've got a couple 6.5x47 Lapua brass in there now. Let me go ahead and fire it up. So it's going to grab the case, drop it there. Of course, you'd have your flame pointed at the case at that point. That's going to take it away and dump it down inside of your tray. And I got it there on time. It's an extremely simple machine and when I talked to Jeff that was his big thing. If you want to make something that was extremely simple, lasts forever, um, but works every time and is a great value. So I want to demonstrate here quickly just how you'll change the direction of the nozzle. So when it comes, it's not going to be set exactly where it needs to be. You're going to have to make some adjustments in order to get your torch pointing in the correct direction. To adjust the angle of it, whether it be outward or more in or closer, you're simply going to turn this little you know, knob there and then you can rotate it and rotate it in or out. Once again, you want to be very careful not to have it pointing at these wheels as they are a plastic or a polymer so they would melt if they get direct heat on them. Um, obviously he wouldn't use them if they melted super easy but if you had direct flame on them they obviously would melt. And then the other way you're going to adjust this in order to adjust the pitch of it up and down is going to be with this half inch nut that's on the back here. So you've got the bolt coming through the back, you've got a nut here and then the other part is coming through here. All you do is reach around the back side Grab that with your half inch drive or wrench or whatever you've got. Make your adjustment. In this case I'm going to loosen it a little bit. Point it in the direction that I want it to go and then simply tighten it up. So an extremely simple mechanism. 
So I've got my uh, standard propane bottle here. I uh, just found it in my garage. It's a little bit cold, hoping it's going to be warm enough to uh, work properly. Uh, but you can run it just off of these little bottles, and I think it'll last quite a while. Uh, so what we'll do to hook this up is uh, you just simply got this hose here. Uh, one thing that I did learn as I was setting this up the first time um, is that on the front side, this guy right here was loose. So I think I was losing some gas that way. It wasn't quite functioning properly. I wasn't getting any gas through. So make sure that that's tight. Uh, make sure that this is closed. And on the back side, you'll want to have this one closed as well. And then just go ahead and hook up your propane. Just screw on that bottle. And then that does tuck away nicely behind the machine here. Turn it around. Now, one hand, go ahead and open up this little valve here. Open it all the way. And come around the front. And if we open this one, we should hear some gas. Perfect. So I've got my little lighter. Go ahead and light her up. Dead air armament. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Kelly McMillan. Fred Shot Show 2016. We're gonna give it a shot right now.